Hey guys, welcome to my channel Security Ninja. Today I am going to walk through the carnage on the Try Hack Me. And uh, this challenge is being released a couple days ago um, by the Try Hack Me and uh, also prepared by the Russia Panda. So special thanks uh, to Russia Panda for preparing this challenge and uh, also want to thank the brand uh, Brad Duncan for um, providing the PCAP on the malware traffic analysis.net. So this challenge um, basically is about a Wireshark. Um, you need to use the Wireshark to analyze the malicious PCAP file. And uh, I guess we can just get started. So um, I have already uh, started um, our Wireshark here uh, loaded with this PCAP file called, uh, called carnage.pcap and uh, I guess we can just go into the first question here. Um, the first question is asking for what was the date and time for the first HTTP connection to the malicious IP? Uh, this one is pretty straightforward. What you need to do is to you need to change the view um, first of all, you need to change the date and time to the UTC time uh, in the human readable format. So you, you change this. And it's asking for what was the date and time for the first HTTP connection. Um, this one is straightforward. You filter out the HTTP connection and you see that uh, the first connection is uh, the, a GET request. Um, made by the victim host um, to this remote IP and I downloaded this malicious zip file. So we see that we have um, September 24th, um, uh, 4.44, um, 38 seconds. So that is the answer for the, for the first questions. And the uh, next question, what is the name of the zip file that was downloaded? Um, straightforward question, we have this documents.zip file. Um, if you follow the TCP stream, you will see that it's actually a, a Excel file, uh, which the user executed um, on their machine and uh, it did some malicious um, stuff. So the, the second question is documents.zip. And third question, what was the domain hosting the malicious zip file? Uh, for this one, you have to go into the view and uh, uh, getting the network address resolving. Uh, you, you have to do your name re uh, resolving. So you see that we have this um, get file here. So if we if you follow the TCP stream, you can see the host is this one. So that is for the question three. Um, and next question we have seen earlier that our uh, Excel file is uh, in the traffic. So you can just inspect in the traffic and you see it's this one. Um, and uh, for the next question, what is the name of the web server of the malicious IP from which the zip file was downloaded? Um, for this one, you can looking at the HTTP uh, respond header. You can see that the server is a light speed. That is the server name, uh, right? So that is the answer for this question. And let's look at the next question. What is the version of the web server from the previous, uh, previous question? So it's asking the, the version. Um, so you can see in the X uh, powered by, you have the PHP slash um, 7.2.34, which this server used the PHP um, as its underlying technology. So we know that that is the answer for this question. And uh, let's move to the next question. Malicious files were downloaded to the victim host from multiple domains. What were the three domains involved with this activity? 
Um, for this one, you are going to looking at the TLS uh, traffic, but um, actually this one have to use hint because it's not that obvious at first. The hint is check HTTPS traffic, narrow down the time frame from 6, um, 4.45, 11 seconds to 4.45, 30 seconds. So if we're going to the TLS connections, um, TLS connection, or uh, I believe you need to filter in the lower case. Um, you're going to the four forty, um, for uh forty five eleven seconds to forty five thirty seconds. Um. So in, in between here, we see that we have the first domain is a fijuice.com.au um, and uh, the second one, uh, th that is one of the answer, right? The, the next one, um, if you're just scrolling down, you can see that is uh, uh, this one, this domain here, and uh, the, the last one is this one. Um, you can see the source domain is this one. So that is for this question. Uh, it's not really straightforward. So I have to use the hint to find it. And the next question, what which certificate authority issued the S uh, SSL certificate to the first domain from the previous question? Uh, so for this, you have to go into the top um, where the uh, TLS connection is just a starting a starting to prepare the TLS handshake. So uh, we see here we have um, the server return this certificate to the client, right? So what you need to do is you need to check the certificate in the in the PCAP file here. So we have Defo Hammon. Um, it's, it's this is like handshakes so we have to find our certificate in here so um so we see that certificates we have the certificates here and uh, if you just expand this uh, layers you will eventually you will find it i believe um you can say we have an issue here um y you can see the issue here is uh it is a GoDaddy, right? So that is the certificate authority is a GoDaddy. So we know that the answer is GoDaddy. And the next question, um, which are the two IP addresses of the Cobalt Strike servers? Uh, use WirusTotal, the community tab, to confirm uh, if IPs are identified as Cobalt Strike C2 servers. Uh, so this one you have to find the Cobalt, uh, Cobalt Strike C2 server. So let's go into the conversation tabs, uh, right? So we can go into the conversation tabs and uh, uh, I believe we have to go into the IP Wave 4 here. Um, let's just... Uh, um, Let's look at uh, TCP here. We have because we know that the default port uh, for the Cobalt Strike is 8080. So we want to find a port that is 8080 here. Um, so let's just look at it. So we have uh, 443 here. Um, not sure if we have 8080 here. That's not doing that. Just to look at all the traffic we have here. So we have one of this um, traffic. We see that it has some traffic going on here. Um, so this one is 185, 120, 125, 204, 174. Let's go into virus total to verify it because it suggests us to going to the wires total um let's copy this right so it is 
the this one. Let's check it very quick here. So it is malicious, and we see that on the virus total, it's actually marked as Cobol strike. Um, and uh, yeah, so that is the um, answer for that one. And it's actually uh, this YP address is actually uh, associated with like a, sco a score of waffle and the uh, quark bot. If you guys are not aware that score of waffle is pretty active back to the September and uh, uh, it's basically the malware that I used to deliver the uh, quark bot and uh, um, so that is for the one of the IP we found uh, we found in the traffic and another tra uh, IP we need to identify is not that it's not that obvious um, so uh, you just have to like looking through here um, you see we have another one here that it's connecting to the 443, uh, which is not the default port here, but we have this IP uh, actually, let me just uh, sort in by the IP address. Um, yeah, so we have this uh, ending with 158. Uh, so if you going to wires total again um, it came back as a cobalt strike uh, on the four, uh, 443 um, and uh, port 80 and also uh, port 8888 as uh, cobalt uh, cobalt strike so uh, so that is the answer for the this question and the next question is what is the host header for the first COBOL strike IP address from the previous question so there's a two way you can do this either you can look at here um, host header is this one it's pretty straightforward you can you can also find it in the PCAP so uh, if you want to find this in the PCAP you have to uh, filter by IP address, right? So it's uh, 185.106.96.158. It's asking the host header, so um, I believe you can follow the TCP stream here. Um, you see that the host is the this OCSP um, the, um, this this domain here. So that is a host header for the this question. And next question: What is the domain name for the first IP address of the Cobol Strike server? Uh, domain name straightforward. We have uh, we have this name resolution to the to this dot live domain so that is the cobalt strike domain so the answer is this one uh, for the next question what is the domain name of the second cobalt strike server ip you may use the virus total to confirm if it's cobalt strike server so we can um just look at the ip uh wave four here we can filter filter by the IP address again here. So one twenty five two zero four dot one seven four. So if you look at here, you will see that we have this domain here. Um, it's securitybossimpov.com. Um, not sure if I pronounce it right, but that is answer for this question. And uh, we have this question is asking, next question is asking for what is the domain name of the post infection traffic? Usually in the post infection traffic, you will have the post request. Um, so we can um, 
filter by post request, right? So we have HTTP request dot message equals equals post. Uh, so you you will have a bunch of um, this um, post requests here uh, happened in the in the post exploitation stage uh, post infection traffic so we have this um, domain here we can see it's uh, as a destination name resolution so that is the answer for this one and uh, Next question, what are the first 11 characters that the victim host sends out to the malicious domain involved in the post infection traffic? Uh, we can see that we have this, if we follow a TCP stream, uh, the first 11 traffic, it, um, it, it, it is this part in the post request uh, URL. Um, I believe that is what it's asking for. And the next question, what was the lens for the first packet sent out to the C2 domain, uh, C2 server? Um, so if you want to find the lens, you're going back to the post request here. Uh, where first packets you have the 281 uh, as a length. So that is answer for this question. And what was the server header for the malicious domain from the previous question? You can look at uh, follow the HTTP stream and uh, found that server header is actually a, a Apache, Apache um, 2.4.49. So you know that that is a, a server header. Um, and the next question, the malware used the API to check for the IP address of the victim's machine. What was the date and time when the DNS query for the IP check domain occurred? Um, so for this one, we can look at the GET request because um, you can Checking the GET request, usually the malware will check in the host IP uh, to determine the external IP address for this host. So it can uh, either use it to call in back to the C2 server or, um, or performing more infections, downloading more payloads. Um, so for this question, you can um, look at the It's asking for a DNS request, so um, so I don't think here is really an effective way to look at it, but uh, But I think um, if you look at the uh, file here, let me check here very quick. Um, yeah, so you can actually look at, use like a really handy filters called frame contents. I'm going to look at the API here. Um, it was actually you can look at the API here. We have a bunch of API call. Um, so the API we look at is actually the api.ipi5.org. I believe that's how to pronounce it. So api.ipi5.org, um, it's actually the domain used by the malware to check its the host external IP address and uh, uh, so we, we, we see that this question, um, the next question is api.ipi5.org. And for this question, if you want to check this one, uh, it's actually, the time is actually 5 p.m. 
um, the zero four seconds. That is the answer for the for the timestamp. Uh, when was the IP check domain occurred? And for the second last question, looks like there was some malicious spam activity going on. Uh, what was the first mail uh, mail from address observed in the traffic? So this one I also used uh, the frame contains. So if you Google, uh, if you just check the mail from, uh, you can see that uh, we have the very first one is from this uh, farshin at mailfar.com. So that is a malicious spamming uh, domain that sending sending out the malicious spamming uh, emails. And uh, for the last question, how many packets were uh, were observed for the SMTP traffic? How many packets were observed for the SMTP traffic? Um, I have to check how did I find that. So, oh yeah, um, so we can actually look at the conversation tab again here. Um, where is, yeah, conversations. And uh, if we are, um, so we first first of all we have to like set up our filter to only see uh, display the SMTP. So this is in order for we, we can like limit it limit our uh, conversation to the SMTP only traffic and we can just check the Ethernet tab. We can see the packets is fourteen thirty nine packets that has the SMTP protocols. Um, so that is for the last question. Um, so uh, that, that, that is um, all for this challenge. And uh, I think it's pretty fun um, to analyze some malicious traffic, especially the, the Cobol strike and the squirrel waffle because, you know, squirrel waffle um, in the September is, is going crazy and uh, um, it's definitely some uh, something you should definitely check out this challenge if you are interested in either uh, analyze the score waffle malicious traffic or the uh, cobalt strike traffic and uh, again thank you uh, for the try hack me and uh, Russia Panda as well the Brad uh, Duncan's um, for for making this challenge happen and um, and also thank you guys for watching this video and uh, I will see you guys in my next video.